This contestant screwed up so bad that Ramsey nearly lost his cool completely. And that was just one of the times when Ramsey hated the food on Hell's Kitchen. And there's no better way to start off this list than with Giovanni. You see, this dude had been working in a steakhouse before Hell's Kitchen, so obviously you'd expect him to nail the steakhouse dinner service in season five, right? Blue team's gonna win dinner service tonight. I'm a chef at our steakhouse. I feel totally confident. I do this every day. Even as they prep for the service, he remarked how embarrassing it would be if they ended up losing, vowing to dedicate the evening service to Robert and his fiance, whose wedding day it would have been. Giovanni hustled to get those steaks out on the hot plate, but things took a turn for the worse when customers started complaining that their steaks were still wrong. As Carol brought them back, Ramsey wasted no time berating Giovanni for it. Touch it, touch it's it, cold. touch it! It's cold. The situation escalated as more and more undercooked steaks made their way back to the kitchen, and Ramsey was obviously not pleased about it. Yes, chef. Thank fuck I've never visited your steakhouse. It's Blue. Yes, chef. He let Giovanni know in no uncertain terms that this was becoming a complete and utter joke, and his teammates were equally frustrated. We have an executive chef of a steakhouse running our grill. Wake up, get it together, and put out some decent food. Giovanni! Yes, chef! Giovanni admitted his failure and mumbled that it sure sucked to struggle with cooking meat when he had plenty of experience under his belt. Ah, tell me about it. I have all the experience in the world running a steakhouse. It, it's just horrible, unacceptable by me. And it just sucks. And then in season 17, he failed his national specialty. He's Italian. And you'd expect him to win the Pizza Fusion Challenge, especially because he was so confident. If they're going against the best pizza maker, you should have picked at least an Italian guy. In fact, Everybody on his team was super confident that he'd wind up carrying the challenge. What's more, he was the lone chef who didn't have a partner assigned, and Ramsey generously gave him the freedom to join any pair he wished. Seizing the opportunity, he teamed up with Benjamin, and, well, his dish was chosen over the ladders as it had a better presentation. As a team, we picked Dio Pizza over Benjamin. We better have this one in the bag. He presented a white pie pizza with shallots. I mean, come on, just look at the thing. Flip that over for me, please. Yeah. yeah. Ramsey pointed out its burnt bottom, disappointed that the team didn't catch the mistake. Great concept, but badly, badly executed. Well, the pizza tasted good, it got what it deserved for its poor execution. And Giovanni lost the round to Michelle. Up next, how about giving Dave's crepe a taste? Or on second thought, let me just have Ramsey describe it. I asked for a crepe, not a plate of crap. <laughs> yeah. It all went down in season six's crepe challenge, and the task was to whip up four crepes, each for a different mealtime. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. It was honestly pretty amusing to see everyone repeatedly stumble and fumble while trying to create their perfect crepes. Well, what's astonishing is that, despite the struggle, they somehow managed to produce something pretty decent. Well, that is everyone except Dave. Dave's attempt at a cream cheese and mixed berry crepe was, well, royally fucked. Why is it full of gunk around the outside? It just looked like shit, not gonna lie. It looks like a plate of diarrhea. Not quite appetizing, huh? Let me do you one better. Not appetizing at all. And Van had some words of wisdom for us. It looks like diarrhea, man. I ain't eating that shit. Ramsey listened and flat out refused to taste it, and that's saying something. It was one of those rare moments when Sabrina managed to outdo Dave in the kitchen. And moreover, it was one of the few moments where the one-armed bandit took an L. Be glad you're tasting a winner's dish. But was that near hat trick of screw-ups more embarrassing than what Kashia from season 12 had to go through? During the 160th sorority anniversary planning challenge, the Southern-themed menu got Kashia excited. I am from the South. That's all we eat every day, soul food. So I know we got this one. And she wasted no time in taking charge to showcase her leadership skills and demonstrate her expertise with Southern flavors. Kashia presented the Red Team's chicken entree and was the first to have her dish judged, facing off against Jason. 
Her dish featured classic fried chicken paired with mac and cheese, collard greens, ham, and hot sauce. Sounds southern to me. While she got points for the collard greens and mac and cheese, it didn't hold up to Jason's dish, a crunchy double breaded leg and thigh with mushroom gravy and mashed potatoes, and a little cheddar cheese for good measure. I'm shocked right now. I thought the chicken was on point, but apparently it wasn't good enough. It's just very frustrating. So Cascio was responsible for the fried chicken station during during service, working alongside Jessica. When Ramsey asked how long the chicken was gonna take, she seemed confident, having fried chicken many times before. I cook chicken a hundred times. I eat plenty of chicken. Unfortunately, the initial batch turned out raw, and she asked for another two minutes to cook it properly, much to everyone's disappointment. Prano chicken. Her opening and closing the oven door over and over again prompted Ramsey to intervene and give her a quick lesson in basic thermodynamics. The situation escalated when she sent up undercooked chicken, leading Ramsey to angrily pull her and Jessica into the pantry for an explanation. It's pink and it's raw. Both of you, come here. Yes, yes. Kasia was deeply embarrassed, and for good reason, considering how dangerous raw chicken is, and asked Jessica for her support. No, chef, I'm not. Chef, the breasts are this, it's only the breasts, like the gorgeous. Get them in early! Yes, yes chef. chef. Kasia had Jessica check the chicken, since Southern cooking held a special place in her heart. Unfortunately, Jessica brought up raw chicken again, despite believing it was cooked. Ramsey gave them a final warning threatening to send them both packing if they came up with more excuses. So, how many Southern cooks does it take to make fried chicken? Well, more than Jessica and Kasia, at least. Well, moving on, what we have here is by far the tastiest dish ever made on the show, made by the greatest chef ever. Ah! Ah! Raj, who was pretty confident about his culinary experience, proudly served up his seafood and vegetable pancake. I am an executive chef, and I began cooking when I was 14 years old. Show me a dish. I was always the best cook in the kitchen, so I can't see why this would be any different. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's a thing. Seafood pancakes. But as soon as Ramsay laid eyes on it, he was in for a surprise, because this so-called pancake looked nothing like the real deal. What? That is a pancake? It's a, yeah. Does that look like a pancake? On top of that, it was practically swimming in oil. On brand for a seafood pancake, but that doesn't make it much better. Oh, it's going for a piss. A pancake that pisses. Surprisingly, despite its appearance, Ramsey did find the seafood's taste pretty appealing. It's a shame because seafood actually tastes quite nice inside. However, the shocking presentation was a deal breaker for him, and he couldn't bring himself to award Raj a point for it. So the point went to Sabrina. You know, it's funny how Raj's dish often ends up on those top five worst signature dishes lists just because it's Raj, but truth be told, it's really not the worst out there. Ramsey actually gave credit where credit was due and complimented the seafood, saying that it tasted quite nice. Sure, the presentation was absurd as hell, and that's why it's on this list. I mean, if you call it a pancake, it should at least look like a pancake. But getting a quite nice from Gordon Ramsay of all people is no small feat. What do you think? And I wasn't BSing you about vegetable and seafood pancakes being a real thing. It's called okonomiyaki over in Japan, and man, are they delicious. While it's technically not always a mix of seafood and vegetables, shrimp and squid are pretty popular fillings for this savory pancake. And fun fact, the name is derived from the word okonomi, meaning how you like it, or what you like, and yaki, meaning grilled. What's more, many fans have already attempted to recreate the dish. After all, Raj brought it to Hell's Kitchen of all places, so why not? That reminds me, Devin also flopped during the Southern Cuisine Challenge in season 16. Man, I'm from the South. I am very comfortable with Southern food. Now, I really like the guy. Season 16's blue team was filled to the brim with awful people, and Devin was like a breath of fresh air. He had more talent than he was given credit for. 
but that didn't stop him from screwing this challenge up. He was paired up against Kimberly from the red team, and their task was to prepare a trout dish. During the cooking process, Devin suggested to Johnny that they use some spicy seasoning to give the dish a kick, and he was confident that they would absolutely ace the challenge. Go spicy? Yeah. Yeah, give it a little bit of spice. Right over like a sh shredded mash with onions and peppers, yeah? Mashed potatoes definitely sell, but make sure they're a garlic mash still. Garlic, cut, right? Still, Johnny's dish somehow ended up bland. When it was time for Devin to present his take on it, he offered up a trout with black-eyed pea succotash and corn bacon fried okra. The expectation was that he would shine, given his southern roots. However, the breading proved to be his undoing. In the south is everywhere, but these are overbreaded. Ramsey pointed out that this mistake made it difficult to distinguish the trout from any other fish, stripping away its identity. That could be any fish in there. With Devin not earning any points, the blue team fell short with a final score of 2-3. to three. So we're apparently going to need more people than Devin, Jessica, and Kasia if we want some down-home cooking in Hell's Kitchen. Next up, I'll give you three options to pick from. It was season three, the leftovers challenge, and like the name suggests, the chefs would be put to the test by working with leftovers. The challenge was all about turning previously used ingredients into a dazzling new dish. The teams were tasked with creating one appetizer and two entrees from a tray of identical leftovers, and they had a mere 30 minutes to make it happen. First up in the entree round were Jen and Josh. Jen presented her steak and eggs dish, but Ramsey was far from impressed. He bluntly stated that it looked like something straight out of a workplace cafeteria and that he expected better from her. Half an hour to make that. But Jen had a bit of a revelation herself, realizing that the dish was actually Bonnie's idea and that she should have ventured into something different. On the other side, Josh brought forth his chicken leg with pea tendrils. Unfortunately, Ramsey wasn't pulling his punches here either. He tore into the dish. Just taste that sauce. Oof. It was overly acidic, and to make matters worse, the chicken was undercooked. The sauce is disgusting. Yeah. And it is just crap. Ramsey even mentioned that he had higher expectations for Josh, given that he was a professional chef. But he put it bluntly, the dish was terrible. And for those of you born in May, here you go. First challenge, I played too early, and now I'm playing too late. I mean, half an hour. You're, uh, welcome. In the Seven Seas Seafood Challenge, each chef had the chance to pick a rival from the opposite team to compete against. The twist was that the chosen chef would then select a scroll, each representing a major body of water, which would determine the type of fish they'd have to cook with. Heidi decided to take on Johnny from the men's team, much to his chagrin, as he wasn't exactly a fish expert. Damn you, Heidi! This is not my thing. When Johnny picked the Atlantic Ocean scroll, the rest of the challenge was revealed. What will we have to eat? Losing tuna! And yeah, they had just 30 minutes to make it all happen. The bluefin tuna round was the first to be judged. When Heidi and Johnny presented their creations, Ramsey couldn't help but ask Johnny what in the world had happened to his bluefin. Look like it's being attacked by a cat. Wow. On the other hand, Heidi's sesame crusted bluefin tuna with a sake Asian stir fry was met with such high praise. Thanks to its elegant presentation, the dish earned her a point. With this, the women took the lead at 1 0, leaving Devin clearly frustrated by what he considered another case of Johnny's less than adequate plating skills. Got to start stepping up in these challenges and not repeat the same mistakes. And hey, he wasn't wrong. Previously in the ostrich meat challenge, Johnny took charge of both the ground meat stations. He had clear plans in mind, a deconstructed burger and chili, and he felt pretty confident. After all, he had experience cooking burgers back in his comfort zone, his home kitchen, and believed he would excel in this challenge. It's gonna be a challenge that I am gonna kill. 
being the first to have his dishes evaluated, he faced off against Ryan and Shanna. His initial creation, a deconstructed Hawaiian bacon burger featuring grilled pineapple and bok choy, didn't quite hit the mark, and received criticism for even its conceptualization. I'm, I'm perplexed a bit. Badly conceptualized. His second dish, a chipotle chili, also fell short, as it was described as dry and rather uninspiring, with Frederick Moran even comparing it to something pretty unappetizing. Looks a bit dry. It's a bit boring. It's kids food. In the end, Johnny had to accept defeat in this round, losing out to the red team. For those of you born in May, be sure to double check for an extra ingredient in your dish, since Johnny's cooking it. And for me to be standing here right now, I want to rip out the beautiful hair in my head. Yeah, his hair. Sorry. But here comes a self-proclaimed pizza lover, Clemenza, who tanked the immigration lunch service challenge. Come on, hey, lot pizza in my life. My family actually owned the pizzeria. Despite feeling right in his element, he served up a raw pizza, and that little misstep ended up stalling the entire blue kitchen. You should be able to nail a New York style pizza. This is a joke. Despite his Italian heritage, Italian night didn't go his way. But before I get to that, during prep, he hyped up the importance of the evening. And just coming through, baby. Stand back, step off, watch out. But he wasn't practicing what he was preaching with how he was brutalizing the chicken. Mr. Italiano takes it upon himself to pound the chicken breasts like this big. Sous Chef Scott was taken aback, as none of the chicken had been prepared that way the day before. Why did we do this? I don't know what to do. I really don't. I have no idea. He f***ed them all, so I don't know what you guys want to do. Sometime later, Clemenza was assigned to the appetizer station alongside Barbie. As the service began, Ramsey emphasized that he was really counting on him. Yes, chef. If there's ever a night for you to shine, yes, chef. it's tonight. Tonight is your night. Let's go. But even with Ramsey's words hanging in the air, he still couldn't be bothered to pay attention. What were the appetizers at that table, Clemenza? <laughs> Clemenza, what were the appetizers on that I, table? I didn't hear it, chef. An irritated Christina had to urge him to step up or step off, and Clemenza's troubles were only just beginning. Since he missed yet another call out, Ramsey even ordered Clemenza to call out the order himself. In the end, Clemenza was slow in picking the shrimp, and as a result, one of the tables was left hanging. It definitely was surprising to see Clemenza struggle like that, especially on Italian night. Not surprising why he was eliminated that episode. In the Creative Steak Challenge in Season 10, it was all about pitting one member from each team against each other. They had this nifty slot machine to reveal their ingredients, which included the type of steak they'd be working with. Dana and Patrick were the first ones to take a spin, and when Dana gave that lever a yank, out came flat iron steak, potatoes, mushrooms, spinach, and a touch of blue cheese. Sounds great, right? Now, let's talk about what Dana actually made. She whipped up a grilled flat iron steak paired with sauteed spinach and Cabernet infused mushrooms. The trouble was, her dish's presentation in the flat iron steak round was a bit of a mess. Yikes. Raj, at least you're in good company. As for Dana, it was a disappointing moment, but she hoped the flavors would at least redeem her dish. Unfortunately, though, her hopes were dashed. Oh, and of course, there is the exceptional LA's signature dish. Fish and chips is a signature dish? Who are you, the United Kingdom? LA was the ninth chef to have her dish tasted by Ramsay, and like you saw, Ramsay wasn't impressed one bit. I mean, how can you butcher something as simple as that? And a dish so near and dear to Ramsey's heart, no less. Moving on to the Mexican Cuisine Challenge in Season 19, where both teams were tasked with elevating four classic Mexican dishes, tacos, tostadas, enchiladas, and chili relleno. This challenge was particularly intriguing because it brought together Mary Lou and Corey, the two finalists of the season giving us the pleasure of witnessing a legendary team up. Corey's got the most experience out of all of us, and she got the most experience cooking Mexican food. 
they decided to take on the chili relleno and enchiladas, a promising pairing given Corey's Latin background and Mary Lou's Southern Tex-Mex flair. Her Southern Tex-Mex kind of flavor, my Latin background, dude, we're gonna be a dynamic duo here. Yeah, that's what everyone expected. Corey even mentioned how naturally this cuisine came to her, thanks to her grandma showing her a thing or two. This is what my, my bread and butter is, so it's definitely one that's, uh, <laughs> this is definitely one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna win for you, Grandma, for sure. But to my surprise, and I'm sure everybody else's, they completely flopped. Right in front of MasterChef judge, Aron Sanchez. And boy, was he not happy about it. Here's the deal, you can look at it and visually, there's some there's some real issues with it. The guy had to see his culture and their culture completely massacred. It had no color, way too much cheese, and most damningly, the enchilada completely crumbled apart. While Aron did commend the mole sauce for its flavor, he couldn't help but mention how poor a fit it was for an enchilada. So it should come to nobody's surprise that they lost this round handedly leaving Corey feeling pretty distraught. Well, sometimes things just don't work out, I guess. Now, next up, I've got a bit of a dilemma about which of these two was better or worse. Maybe you can help me decide between the dishes presented by Manda and Alan in the duck challenge of season 15. Each chef paired up with someone from the other team in a canoe, and they had to snatch five rubber ducks, each sporting a different ingredient, and then rush back to Hell's Kitchen. They had a solid 40 minutes to turn those ducks into delectable dishes. Josiah Citrin, the guest judge, was in the house, and both he and Ramsey were gonna rate these dishes on a scale of one to four. The one with the most points would walk away with the victory. Now, let's break it down. Manda's duck dish didn't quite hit the mark. Her concern was on point. Well, part of it, anyway. It did end up overcooked, and Ramsey didn't hold back, likening the taste to pork. Needless to say, that was a major letdown for Manda, who really hated disappointing Ramsey. She managed to score two points. Then, Alan's dish, featuring duck with deep-fried collard greens, didn't exactly hit the mark either. It ended up being criticized for being too greasy and somewhat bland. Yeah, it looked inedible. He too scored just two points. I mean, even Frank, who had never worked with duck before, even his dish was pretty impressive. Either way, in other words, Alan and Manda just couldn't deliver. You hate to see it, but this cultural butchering pales in comparison to what happened with bread. Now, you'd expect everybody's favorite Italian to be able to make a perfect calzone in his sleep, but the International Cheese Challenge in season 14 proved otherwise. He found himself facing off against T, who wasn't intimidated at all. And he's all like, I'm the fucking Italian, look at the tattoo on my chest. And Nick also wasn't convinced of his abilities. Brett's so excited to get a calzone, and it's Italian, and he's Italian, we all get it. Prosciutto de Parma. Just shut up. It's really annoying. In spite of it all, though, Brett eagerly announced his vision for the perfect calzone. Uh, caprese uh, calzone with a little twist of prosciutto de Parma and soprasate. Then, with just eight minutes left, disaster struck. The bottom of his calzone was absolutely destroyed because of how thin his dough was. But hey, Brett wasn't ready to give up just yet. He quickly switched gears, moved his tasty filling into a fresh dough base, and popped it back into the pizza oven, hoping for a comeback. When it was finally time for Ramsey to taste his dish, Brett proudly presented his take on a traditional calzone. It had roasted peppers, heirloom tomatoes, and pomodoro cheese. Ramsey liked the flavors inside, but he couldn't let the raw dough slide. Chef underneath. That is raw, and it's too bad, because had that been in for another two minutes, then you'd be leaving Hell's Kitchen for an amazing day. I imagine nobody's gonna be surprised when I say T ran away with this round. No? Good. Now, do you remember Kimmy always saying, I'm from the South, I grew up in the hood, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. 
only to be eliminated on Southern Night. During the challenge, she was even bragging about it. I got a banging ass plate, man. I know Brian's about to go down with my plate. Uh. When her turn came, she confidently presented her creation, an oregano panko crusted pork chop accompanied by creamy grits and infused with sauteed bacon and Monterey cheese. However, Ramsey didn't find a lot of value in how dull it was. Ramsey always gives me criticism on my plating. Dude, just taste the shit. Surprisingly, despite the rocky start, her dish still managed to earn praise for its delicious grits. So much so that they carried her to a win against Brian. As the Southern Night dinner service kicked off, she found herself at the fish station. If there's one person that should be absolutely key to the success of the red team tonight, it should be you. Um, that didn't happen, despite this. Super stoked for tonight, because this is what I do every day of my life, but yet I'm nervous. First, she served up burnt catfish, in spite of both how easy it is to cook and how much it was in her wheelhouse. It's supposed to be from the South. You cannot cook, period. This is she struggled with the refire, too. Whoa. She even hit another snag when an oil bubble popped in her face, which uh, I can at least empathize with. Despite the burn, she managed to get the refire accepted. However, due to her earlier mistake, the red team had fallen behind. To make matters worse, her catfish dishes on this round ended up both raw and burnt, a double whammy that destroyed what little was left of Ramsey's sanity. Come here, you. Let me show you something. I've got raw. Raw catfish there. Oh. Then there's burnt. He was trying so hard to hold back tears there. You hate to see it. Oh, I could cry. I could just. I could just cry. Oh. Stop. Now, if you want to take revenge on someone, then you gotta have Bonnie's contemporary cheese course on your menu. Ramsey had quite a bit to say about it. In fact, he had a lot to say about it. Ooh, different. So you're pretty new at this? Yes. Yeah, I can see that. It did, but in a bad way. To him, it looked less like a cheese course and more like a deconstructed mango cheesecake. The interesting part was, Ramsey not only found it lacking, but he also made it clear that the dish put Bonnie's inexperience front and center. You can imagine that wasn't exactly music to her ears. Now, in season 9, Krupa absolutely butchered her signature dish, traditional Gujarati stuffed naan. Ramsey's reaction was swift, exacting, and brutal, and he started with how unappetizing it looked. It's like you've got four bits of on a plate, splat. <laughs> and that moniker carried over into her flavors too. The spices in the dish were completely raw, which led Ramsey to call it this. Raw, bland, my dear Cooper. Yeah, that is crapper. Oh God, that was brutal. Like, I don't even know what else to say. Okay. And now you better brace yourselves for this next dish. In the first half of season seven's pork creation challenge, Nilka made a determined dash to capture her pork partner. Her eyes were fixed on the bacon collared pig and she went all out trying to catch it. But this particular swine turned out to be quite the elusive creature. Oh my God! After what can only be described as an exhilarating chase, she finally cornered the one, adorned with a blood sausage collar. Now, when Fran selected prunes, Nilka couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Prunes didn't exactly scream appetizing to her, and she's not alone. The words blood and sausage might evoke some unsavory mental images, but imagine how those flavors would collide with prunes. I mean, seriously, what was Scott thinking when he paired Nilka and Fran together? As they began cooking, neither of them felt particularly confident because they had never worked with blood sausages before. Not to mention attempting to pair them with prunes of all things. Is it supposed to be mushy? Yeah. I Wait, aren't they supposed to be firm and juicy? Things quickly took a disappointing turn when they pulled their creation out of the oven. It was a complete flop, and they both knew it. Nilka felt a sinking feeling in her stomach, and Scott chimed in, suggesting they should have pricked those sausages before cooking. 
Later, when it was time to plate their dishes, Nilka and Fran were the only ones who didn't wear a confident expression. When Ramsay tasted their dish, well, let's just say the swine-inspired dining experience was far from perfect, and leave it at that, okay? <sighs> Nilka, clearly unimpressed from the start, spilled the beans and admitted she wasn't pleased with what they had done. But a furious Ramsay demanded answers. Fran shot daggers at Scott, the one who had the initial idea but conveniently kept quiet, refusing to take responsibility. Uh, sorry for the bad pun. You see, I needed to break the tense moments. Meanwhile, Nilka boldly declared she'd prefer to serve an empty plate. But Ramsay was in no mood to give them any slack. The dish was a complete disaster. Although, let's be honest, it didn't look very appealing from the start. Now, did it? Now, though, that does remind me of the time Van was assigned to lead the fish station in season six. Given that he was a fish cook, it should be easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Well, you've made it this far into the video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that it was stressy, depressy, lemon zesty. Even in the previous service, he served raw halibut. Not once, but twice. And he wasn't about to redeem himself here. First, he was caught searing a sea bass instead of focusing on cooking the scallops, which blew up in his face. Please. Listen to me! Yes, sir. But we haven't even sent the appetizers. Here we go again. New f***ing night. Yeah, Ramsay wasn't ready to let him off the hook so easy after that little outburst. I'm watching you like a whore. I'm a f***ing eagle over you. I understand. What's on you? The pressure seemed to get to them, and he began to struggle with the scallops. Come here. You're sweating in the food. Yeah. Oh, I know it's f***ing hot. You're sweating in the food. Yeah, Ramsay went for a complete order reset causing a huge backlog of tickets and very little food to be served. And Ramsay wasted no time in pinning it all on Van. As the service continued, Van's troubles persisted. But I'm dragging a f***ing halibut. Three minutes, chef. The pan's not even hot. It's not even sizzling. Van. He was caught dragging a halibut in a pan that wasn't even hot, which obviously led to raw halibut to be sent to the pass. Believe me when I say that Ramsay was done. Oh, I keep letting him down. He sent Van to the pantry for a glorified timeout, and it came with a stern warning. One more mistake, and he could be ejected from service. And the kitchen struggled without Ramsay and sous chef Scott. Yeah, they walked out, and Van found himself needing to fend for himself, with Suzanne refusing to help plate dishes. When Ramsay and sous chef Scott returned, it was time for somebody to leave the kitchen. And yep, that someone was Van. And following right behind him were Suzanne and Ariel. Whew, what an end that was. However, in season 11, Dan mistakenly believed that he had an advantage in the Chinese dish creation challenge because of this. I lived in Asia for a year. I am getting my jacket back today. Big risks equal big rewards. Oh yeah, he was on probation and had to earn back his jacket. But I can't help but wonder, where in Asia did he live? Japan? China? Russia? Now, just because he lived in Asia for a year doesn't mean he's a master of the cuisine, but Dan was confident. This is not gonna be hard. These ingredients pick themselves. I can't f this up. So confident, in fact, that he somehow managed to undercook rice, like the bedrock of all Asian cuisine. Now, in the initial part of the challenge, his enthusiasm grated on Ray as he incessantly questioned which ingredient should go where. Dan, he's asking me a lot of questions. I thought you went to Asia. Why are you f***ing asking me? Good point, though. Anyway, it was during the second part of the challenge when Dan was tasked with responsibility over the fried rice. As the first member of the blue team to have his dish judged, he was convinced that his extensive time in Asia would secure his victory. I'm getting my jacket back right now. Because I lived in Asia for a year. What do you eat while you live in Asia for a year? Asian food. He finally presented a dish of fried rice with mushrooms, coconut milk, peanuts, and sweet and spicy prawns. While the presentation was decent, there was a significant issue. The rice a little bit undercooked. Chinese rice should never be undercooked. That is simply embarrassing. In the end, Dan lost the round to Jacqueline. 
and Anthony couldn't resist a playful jab. Hey Dan, go back to Asia for another year. And rightly so. Now, for those of you who don't know, the next signature dish is apparently Ramsey's absolute favorite. It's fine. Virginia's dish was a coconut and pomegranate celery root salad. But before you celebrate too early, let me paint the full picture for you. She might have seemed promising at first, but the reality was quite different. It's fine. As far as rabbit food goes, because it's all raw and crunchy. In all honesty, she got exactly what she deserved. Her plate contained nothing that had been cooked. Instead, during those critical 30 minutes, all she did was toast some nuts. And I know it's a good salad. A rabbit might like it. I don't, I don't think rabbits like coconut milk. Okay, let's spice things up, shall we? And when I say spicy, I mean dishes that were too hot for even Ramsay to handle. First, Jessica's Cajun crabs. Cooked slightly Cajun style with a spicy aioli. Aioli's very hot. Then there's Nilka's chicken wings with a bottle full of Tabasco. Jesus, that's gonna blow your f***ing ass out. That burn my mouth. Nobody gets a. Or how about Maribel's Argentine plantain soup? Yeah, and this one couldn't take any criticism of her dish. Well, at least nobody got Antonia's gumbo. So, which is the most absurd dish you've come across on the show? Make sure to drop them in the comments. And hey, don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free, where we can take a deep dive into more times when chefs ruin their dishes on Hell's Kitchen. And guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.